One, two, three, uh My baby don't mess around me Cause she loves me so And this I know for sure Hey Ryder, what's shaking? As the weather warms up, campus has been full of many entertainment events. So let's get started. Alpha Psi Omega put on their production of Closer this past weekend. Diana and Kristen caught up with some of the cast members after the show. The show's really uh, a struggle for love. Uh, there's only four characters in the cast, and um, there's some interesting dynamics as far as uh, who's dating who's ex, how we feel about that. Uh, he's Alice's boyfriend. She told me yesterday that he plays around on the net. You were talking to him. No, no, I was talking to a woman. How do you know? <laughs> because. Believe me, she was a woman. I got a huge... <laughs> she was a woman. <laughs> no, she wasn't. <laughs> Anna is a photographer from New York. She's moved to London. Uh, she just got over a big breakup. We don't know who she does. And um, she meets the first character, uh, Dan. And they have a little thing. He actually screws up and introduces her to someone else. And then there's a whole big love triangle between all four characters. Why did you marry me? I stopped seeing him. I wanted us to work. Why did you tell me you wanted children? Because I did. And now you want children with him? I amuse you, but I bore you. No. <laughs> you did love me. You, you have changed my life. God, I hate hurting you. <laughs> then why are you? Because I'm selfish. When I first saw the, um, the movie, uh, which came out back in like 2004, um, you watch it from start to finish, and this is the true with the play, you watch it from start to finish, and you almost can't describe exactly how you've been changed by the show, but you know you've been changed by it. It's, it's really a wild ride. And so it is, just like you said it would be. Life goes easy on me most of the time. And so it is the shorter story. No love, no glory No hero in her sky I can't take my eyes off of you I hope you all got a chance to see the show. Keep your eyes and ears open for the next Alpha Psi production. Helena Maria performed on Wednesday at Brownwater. Justin Herrera had a chance to chat with these twins. Check them out. Well, to me, all of my songs are like my children, and I really love them all yeah. in their own little ways. But um, we just recorded a CD. Um, Serene and it's, it consists of all original songs, so I guess uh, it's really hard to say which one's my favorite. I like, I like Letter to the Moon. Yeah. We, we wanted to, we knew we wanted to do something with music, but we didn't really know how to go about doing it. I mean, there's different ways to go to school, learn about it, and, but we just, my advice would just be to just like, Go keep at going it. like in front of people you know open mics and just like I think like the more shows you have under your belt the more you know you, know, you learn from it really so I say my mine. parents. Just mine. How about <laughs> mine are very great. Right. They're so supportive. Yeah. Um, my dad, he does the audio at our shows. And they're they're our little roadies. Yeah. Big supporters. We love them. <laughs> Oh, 
How can I buy a copy of this game? Well, you can purchase it online at our website, which is HelenaMarie.com, or MySpace, which is MySpace.com slash Or you can get one from us in person at a show. <laughs> Pub's not the only place that attracts talented people. Let's see who we found this week at the Bronx Diner. Hi guys, this is Nastasia, Rider University. I'm gonna say something in Serbian for you guys. Um me drago što sam ovdje na rideru i sviđa mi se mnogo. Igrala sam odbojku ovdje, hvala vam svima i prijetno već. Hello, my name is Juan Santa Maria. Um, I am from Spain at Ten Rider University. I will speak a little bit of Spanish for you. Hola, me llamo Juan Santa Maria, soy de España. Vine aquí con los cinco años y Y me gusta estar en este país, es divertido con, estar con mis amigos y, y con mi novia Anastasia. Swigert's auditorium, Dr. Miriam Petty came to speak about the history of black women actors in the early 20th century. Last Wednesday, I attended a lecture on African American actors and film in the early 1900s. Dr. Miriam Petty was there to explain how the role of African American women actresses started to evolve. I came here to talk about the film Imitation of Life and to talk about its reception among African-American audiences in the 1930s. Um, I'm really interested in the way that this film, which is a Hollywood-produced film, produced largely by whites, was received by African-American audiences and sort of negotiated and interpreted by African-American audiences in ways that were really culturally specific and really specific to the historical moment of the 1930s. During the lecture, Dr. Petty showed clips from the movie Imitation of Life. In this scene, two African-American actresses are involved in a conversation. The actress on the couch is portrayed to be a white female, but is actually an African-American. How long is this party going to keep up anyway? What's the matter with my baby? I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed coming and I really enjoyed the conversation that I had. I, I always say to folks, you know, I know what I think, but I want to know what other people think. Um, I'm alone in my head with my own thoughts, you know, enough part of the day that it's nice to get a chance to hear what other folks are thinking. And uh, there were some really interesting questions, some really good insights. This was a very informative lecture on African American actresses and the crowd seemed to come out of the meeting with a knowledgeable understanding about Dr. Petty's research. For What's Shaken, this is Bill Eisman signing off. This subject seemed like a turning point for black women across America. Thanks for the story, Bill. This week, Dream Girls is playing at the BLC Theater. Here's Danielle with the five. So let's get started. Number five, it's based on a Broadway musical. Number four, it's about a trio of black soul singers climbing the pop charts in the 1960s. Number three, it won two Academy Awards by Jennifer Hudson, which is pretty good considering she had to put on 20 pounds for the role. Number two, it's got an all-star cast, including Jamie Foxx, Beyonce Knowles, and Eddie Murphy. And the number one reason is, fame comes and goes, stars rise and fall, but dreams last forever. So let's take a look at the clip. Oh, were we when we first start singing again? 12. And still we get nowhere. Our music, our artists, 
to a broader audience. Y'all gonna stay here and open your own act. Did you say our own act? <laughs> Then it's gonna sing lead. What do you mean? I always sing lead. Can't you see? It's timeless now. But you gotta believe. So be sure to go check out Dream Girls this weekend. Be sure to check out Dream Girls Thursday through Sunday at 7.30. SEC has announced who the headlining act for our spring concert will be next month. Here's a highlight about the concert star. With his own twist to pop rock music, singer-songwriter-musician Jason Mraz came on the music scene in the summer of 2002 with his first hit, The Remedy. The Remedy was released on his debut album, Waiting for My Rocket to Come. He later released a live album in 2004, followed by his sophomore album, Mr. A to Z, in 2005. What do you say? That's a wrap. Rock and roll producer Eddie Kramer made a visit to Writers Campus last week to talk about the many experiences he has had in the music business. Danielle and Diana were there to take a look. I would hear these great records like Little Richard and Elvis Presley. I loved Little Richard because being a piano player, you know, hearing that. Eddie Kramer came down to the PLC Theater last week to talk about his many experiences as a music engineer and producer. After working with rock gods such as Jimi Hendrix, The Beatles, Led Zeppelin, and The Rolling Stones, all people really wanted to hear were the stories he had to tell. A session we were doing with The Rolling Stones, um, and at this point I was still sort of graduating to being a senior engineer. I'm in the corner over here, literally in the corner of the, in the control room, sitting by the tape machine. And um, I'm looking out, and there's Mick Jagger out in the studio. I looked across and I saw that the doors were open and I saw these two enormous English constables. And there's these two guys, they're just standing there. And I said, Glenn, the engineer, tell Mick the fuzz are here. Now this was at the time when the stones are about to be, they've been busted for drugs and God knows what else. Anyway, so Mick, without missing a beat, he turns around to them, he says, Oi, come over here. So these cops go, <laughs> and they walk over to him. He's standing in the middle of this big studio, and he says, Look, I'm having a problem with my headphones, can you help me? And the next thing you know, there are these two cops, one with one finger on one ear on the headphone, one with the other, holding his headphones on. In the meantime, in the control, it's total panic. It's like a Chinese fire drill, because there was this haze of smoke that sort of, like, it's about here, right? And so people, in, you know, England doesn't have very good air conditioning, or none at all. Um, so the, all of us, we like flapping the doors around and trying to get the air circulating. And the producer, Andrew Lou Golden, was like a walking pharmaceutical. That's the story. But it's not the story, because you know what? All they wanted, they wanted autographs. <laughs> It sure was cool to hear someone in the field let us in on all the rock and roll secrets. Well, that's all for this week, Ryder. For the entire University Network, I'm Steph Chartel, reminding you to keep shaking. Here we go. Shake it, 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 shake it,